Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionsell.com. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday, December 3rd, 2022. We're back for another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. What are we doing here? Well, what's the market's next move? That's what we're going to figure out here. And in the Saturday Synopsis, we look at charts, we look at indexes, we look at stocks, and we try to figure out where the market's going to go. And that's why you're here. Us as option traders, you know, I think the most important thing is trying to figure out where the stock is going to move because when you're trading options whether you're buying calls selling puts buying puts whatever you have to know where the stock is going to move to or have a pretty decent idea where the stock's going to move to otherwise there's no reason to be trading options so that's why we as option traders we spend a lot of time trying to figure out where the stock is going to move to and in the 30 years or the 30 years plus that i've been in this business I've been a technical analyst. I watch the charts. I look at the patterns. I see this the support and resistance levels. And then I make my move. And I let the charts tell me when to get in and get out of a trade. So I make these free YouTube videos, try to help you out as an options trader, and even as a stock trader, try to figure out you know, what you can do and how you can look at charts to figure out where it's going to move next or where it's not going to move. As option traders, spe specifically option sellers, one of the things we we also try to do is figure out where a stock isn't going to go. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's a great way to be a profitable option seller by knowing where a stock isn't going to move. And if you sell options, you pretty much understand what that is. So let's just jump right, right in like we do every week and just start looking at charts and seeing specific stocks. I'll show you some of the trades that we've gotten into recently and uh, you know some other stocks that, that i think may be ready to move uh, moving forward all right so here's what we do every week we look at we look at charts and what you're seeing on your screen in front of you for those that are new uh here's here's what i look at this is basically a stock chart and you'll see some lines and things and uh you know this is just me marking up marking up the charts but right here is what you see this is the price action of the of the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. We use that as our best gauge of the overall market. And he, up here in this section is the price action. Each line here is one day's worth of trading. These are open, high, low, closed bars. You can look at candlesticks if you want. Down here is one of the indicators I use. It's the RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator with a 14-day look back period. Okay, and so this is about two years worth of time on my screen right here. It doesn't matter how, how far back your screen goes. That, that really doesn't matter. You can always change the settings to look at a one-minute chart, daily chart, 15-minute chart, whatever. But on the RSI down here, we have the 80 level and the 20 level as our overbought, oversold um, thresholds. And you can tweak those to whatever you want. I think the default for the RSI is probably 70 and 30. You can make it 75, 25. I use 80, 20. So that 80, 20 level really tells us that a chart or a stock is really overbought or really oversold. And you can see it oscillates between those levels. And then when it gets really down here below the 20 level or at the 20 level, we know a stock's pretty oversold and, and and a turnaround should be coming in the near future same thing on the upside if it gets overbought into this overbought area a downturn's pretty much coming pretty soon all right so let's look at the charts see what's been going on uh i was not able to make a video last week we had the u.s thanksgiving holiday so i took the saturday off and now we're back and so let's see what the stock market's been doing since then here is the daily chart of the the spy has been saying uh, if you've been following the markets, you know, basically 2022 has not been a great year for the stock market. Here's January 1st, 2022. And you can see just visually looking, the market has been in a downtrend. Prior to January 2022, the market was in this nice uptrend, basically since COVID hit. Market's just been going up, 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 up. And then 2022 was not such a great year for, for all of us bulls. But, you know, it has fits and starts, ups and downs. But for the most part, if you just visualize, the market's been going down. But we've been getting some decent action these last couple months of the year. Typically, the last three months of the year, last quarter of the year, is more bullish than bearish. And I think we're starting to see that play out. You can see some of the channels that I've drawn. These blue lines 
are called channels and it just tells you where the current price action is going from mid mid june to mid august we had a nice little reprieve from the down move we had this uptrend and then it totally reversed and came back down uh, if you watch my videos recently we talk about this this low that was put in here on october 13th we had a big gap down uh, move lower had the flush out lower and then reversed and closed or closed higher on that same day and the market's been basically going up since we draw these lines here as, as areas of you know prior support and resistance so the number that i've been harping on for the spy is this 390 level right here this blue line right here is a 390 level you can see 390 right here that really has been the the, the last line in the sand for, for the market uh over the last month or so and we've pretty much held it pretty good right here here's 390 so the market's been going up so you know I've been talking about that level over the last few videos I've made and which is good. So the market's held above 390. There's lots of things going on. You know, interest rates uh, have been rising. The U.S. Federal Reserve here in the U.S. has been raising interest rates. But what happened this week is Jerome Powell, who is the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, said that, you know, based on things that they're seeing, they the, most likely they're going to start pulling back on the aggressiveness of their rate hikes and you can see right here let me open this up a little bit more this long bar right here this was wednesday this week and the market just took off like a rocket i'd like to let me go back and and show you on the one minute chart here what that looked like uh on wednesday this week uh this move was the unemployment number yesterday friday and we're gonna i'm gonna show you that in a minute but let's go back to wednesday uh follow me here while i scroll back so here was wednesday right at 1 30 p.m eastern on wednesday this is where jerome powell started to speak and he said that the fed will probably pull back on the interest rate aggressiveness and you can see just the rest of the day had this power move higher so this is the spy remember so it went from 394 right before the the announcement and it rallied all the way up to 40 roughly 407 408 at the end of the regular trading hours right here so the market's been up, which has been great. We like the market going up. That works well for us. Uh, you know, what we do is we sell put options. We sell put option credit spreads and, and we like to be more in more bullish markets. So what happened on Friday, yesterday, December 2nd, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, we had the U.S. employment numbers, the unemployment numbers come out and the employment was came in a bit stronger than people were expecting, meaning more jobs were created, more people are working. So the economy in the US is still very strong. And you can see this is a one minute chart. So this is where the price action went uh, in one minute's worth of trading at 8.30 a.m. Eastern yesterday, and it just collapsed. Why would it do that? Because if the economy is strong, that means that uh, traders are thinking that the, the Federal Reserve are gonna have to keep up their aggressive interest rates interest rate hikes to kind of cool the inflation down and the market does not like when interest rates rise so obviously people were thinking oh the fed's going to keep raising rates aggressively so we're going to sell this thing off so in one minute time the market came off but look what happened through the rest of the day the market just reversed itself grinding 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 higher actually traded higher on the day and then we finished here around just under 406 so we really didn't lose a lot of ground uh on an overall daily basis so here's the here's the daily chart for yesterday so here's friday's action right here this this bar right here so you can see that we close at 406.91 uh on the day the regular trading hours and what's good is that it's still holding above 390 which is my line in the sand and what's really good is that it got above the 200 day moving average on my charts here, I always have a 20 day, 50 day and 200 day moving average. This 200 day moving average is like the granddaddy of moving averages. That is a true line in the sand for a lot of the price action. And the market was able to get above it. You can see the line here. And here's where we close Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. We traded above the 200 day moving average and it closed above the 200 day moving average yesterday as well. So that's a really good sign that the market wants to remain strong. I think that all of these things, all this, all this bad news out there, if you want to call it bad news, rising interest rates, 
Um, inflation's still up there. You know, COVID's still out there. The war in Ukraine's still out there. All these things that you would think that would keep the market down, uh, you know, the last couple months obviously has not kept the market down. I think the market finally figured out, you know, we've sold off so much. There's a lot of value out there. The market is always a forward looking mechanism and they're looking to better times. Optimism reigns in the stock market in the long run and companies adapt. Companies adapt to the supply chain issues. They adapt to inflation. They figure out how to make money. Successful companies figure out how to make money in good times and bad times. And that's how the stock market works. If you look at the stock market in the long run, here's the here's the long run stock market. The market goes up over time in the long run. And what we have to deal with sometimes is is a down market. You just, you know, if you're a long term bull, sometimes you have to sit through the, you know, the bad times and you can see the market's been going down. But but the last half of the year, it's sort of getting this sideways action, which means the, the bottom is the bottom really, I believe, is in for the near term and the market is ready to start moving higher again. So that's where we are on the, the S&P 500. Good thing traded above the 200 day moving average. That's pretty telling. Close kind of near the high of the day, which could maybe give us some momentum starting in next week. Let's look at the the NASDAQ using the triple Q's. Here's the triple Q's. This has been the, the weakest of the three main indexes, which the Dow Industrials is the third index. And because the, the NASDAQ is made up of these really large stocks that take that that comprise a big part of the the triple Q's in the Nasdaq. We're talking the Fang stocks, you know, the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. A lot of these big tech stocks have, have fallen of late and it's and is they're they're starting to turn around, but has held the the Nasdaq down as as the worst performer in 2022. And now you can see uh, I think it was the last couple of weeks ago, I drew this bull flag pattern where you have the flagpole and the pennant and typically a bull flag once it gets out of the pennant here it typically goes back to the upside it goes back from where it started from started low made a little pullback and then starts to go you can see the nasdaq the triple q's is playing out pretty good on wednesday we had that nice big move up so this bull flag is playing out as exactly as it should powering back out to the upside so the triple q's nasdaq you know it's still down here near the lows but it's starting to move higher. It has a 200 day moving average lurking above. But if it can get there and above it, just like the SPY has, then things will start to look really good for the market. Let's look at the Dow. We use the DIA. Here's the symbol DIA. This is the exchange traded fund for the Dow Jones. The Dow has been the strongest of the three indexes. You can see we had this kind of now it's a we had the inverse V here. And now we have the the this regular V here and you can see we had a double bottom double bottom is when price action comes down once goes up a little and comes back down to almost the same exact spot and then bounces. That's this is the, the this is the uh, ultimate double bottom pattern right here. OK, so that's typically a bullish pattern, very bullish pattern. And you can see the Dow has gotten back above the last high it made in August. You can also see like a W pattern. We talk about the W pattern when when the price action gets above the middle of the W, it will tend to keep going. So if you visualize the W here, you can see this price action got above this area here just the, towards the end of this week and it, it could still go to next week and and it's trying to get to the highs of all time for the Dow. Let's make sure we're looking at the all time highs. We'll go out to the monthly. So the all time highs for the DIA was made. What's my date here? Right here is on. Yep, this is January. So January was when the last high was made and that price was right up here. So right around 370, just under 370. So we got a little ways to go to take out the highs, but the Dow is definitely the strongest, looking pretty good. I, I have to believe going through the end of the year and into January, um, I, I really don't see anything that, that could bring this market back down to test these lows again. I really don't. I think, you know, all, you know, unless there's another catastrophe out there that we, we, we don't see coming, 
all the news is out there. All the bad news is out there. It's been factored into prices. And I think the market just realized that there was a lot of value after this big sell-off. Let's start buying. So uh, we're in our newsletters. I'm taking the stance that I think the bottom has been put in. We're going to get into more new trades. We sell put options, sell put option credit spreads. So I'm just going to bring up our website here. If you want to learn about what put selling is all about, put selling is our bread and butter. We sell put options. That's what we do. Okay, so here's our website, <clears throat> and you can go to Put Selling Basics. This is a free ebook, Put Selling Basics, right here. Scroll down, and you can put your name and email address in here. We'll send you an email that has a link to the free copy. If you want to learn about put selling, that's what we do in our services tab here. Here's our two newsletters that we run. We also have our one on one coaching sessions if you want to get yourself up to speed on how to trade options. And, um, so get a copy of that, learn what's going on. And that's what we do. We sell put options. So where are we now? So that's the three ind indexes. Let's look at some individual stocks and see what's been going on. Here's my list of, of stocks that I, I kind of keep track of most of the day. Every day I keep watching these stocks. <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, they email, email me, tell me, Lee, what are these things right here? What are these CZ, CS? These are these are other commodities that I track. I don't really talk about commodities that much anymore. Futures markets. This is the corn market, corn futures, uh, soybean futures, wheat futures. We got coffee futures here, sugar, cocoa, cotton, orange juice, and gold and silver. You know, I used to be a big commodities trader when I first started in this business, uh, you know, but these are the handful of commodities that I still track on a daily basis just to see if there's any, any action that, that could be worth getting into, but we don't talk about those much, uh, here. Uh, so anyway, let's look at some other biggies that we always track and follow stocks. I'm talking about, let's look at Apple because Apple's one of the most popular stocks in the world. Almost everyone on this planet has an iPhone, iPad, Mac computer, so Apple is a stock that we like to look at every week. Apple has been in this V, reverse V, and kind of trading sideways here in between this, this range here. Uh, you know, we're bullish on Apple. I'm bullish on Apple. I want to see Apple go higher. It's been kind of hanging around here sideways. So we um, actually um, <clears throat> are looking to see Apple move higher. Uh, we want it to move higher. And uh, we ha actually have a spread trade on Apple. We sold a put spread on Apple, meaning we're bullish. We're neutral to bullish on the stock. Even if Apple trades sideways, we can still profit. That's one of the best, thing best things as an option seller. Even if the stock moves sideways, you can still make a profit. You can't say that if you're an option buyer, whether you're buying calls or buying puts. If the stock moves sideways, you're going to lose money due to that time decay. As an option seller, time decay is your best friend. So if a stock moves sideways, we're still making money. So it's really not that bad for us. We'd rather see it go higher, but sideways action is not that bad either. So Apple really needs to get above this 150 level right here and stay above. It needs to get above the 200 day moving average right here, which is around 154 or so. So we want to see Apple start to move higher. If the general market could move up, then Apple will move up as well. You know, a lot of stocks, individual stocks, they don't have a lot of news going on for the company you know, outside of their, their quarterly earnings results, sometimes they have news announcements, new products, whatever, but not a lot of news. So stocks will follow the general index. So if the stock market, the whole market could start to move up, which it has been doing, we'd like to see these individual stocks move up as well. Apple's been kind of being held down as part of that NASDAQ group. Let's look at Amazon. See what's happening with Amazon. Amazon's still trading down in the dumps here. Uh, below $100 a share, still down here. You know, it had the, the earnings were not so good. So it's still kind of trading down in the dumps. We need to get back above this line here, which is probably around $102 a share, which was the line. And you can see the support back here, um, May and June at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. It tried to get through the, the 102 level and it bounced, but now it finally got through it. So now 102 is the resistance. So on the way back up, it'll probably find some resistance here. If it could blast through it, then this, the 50-day uh, moving average will be the next line in the sand and then the 200 days. So a Amazon's still kind of hanging around the lows. Let's look at Google. These are the biggies. Google also had bad earnings. 
dumped down here and now it's coming back to its support resistance level right now right around 100 102 103 as well just like like amazon so you can see the resistance here I'll open this up a little bit more tagged it here it got knocked back down so this was wednesday this week it rallied with everything else but this line right here is going to be resistance until it could really get through it and then ch ch challenge the 200 day moving average here let's look at netflix we also have a position on netflix we sold some put credit spreads put option credit spreads that's what we do uh netflix has been working great for us this 250 line right here was the line in the sand it was holding it down for a long period of time then it blasted through it it's gotten above uh, all the moving averages here and look at this nice move it's it look it's got this nice upwards trajectory here i like the i like how netflix is is going it's got some ground to make up here. It has almost closed the gap from here. We talk about closing the gap. See this big gap here. This is where trading one day and then the next day was down here. So this is an earnings gap. But what you want to see the subsequent trading, you can see here we are here has almost reached the bottom of this bar. That would be closing the gap. But it also has a big gap up here as well. So Netflix has got a lot of work to do to get back up to $700 a share. But I like the way it's looking now. We can draw some, some support. You know, here's a, you know, the upwards part of the channel right there. You can see that. So Netflix will probably trade along this level, keep bouncing off this line right here and continue to move higher. So I do like Netflix. It's looking good. Uh, what other stocks do we have? Um, what are some of the biggies? Let's look at Microsoft another big player so microsoft had been in this downwards channel but obviously um since uh looks like beginning of november it has a nice little up move you can draw the support lines here just connect some of the bottoms and you can see it's currently in this sort of upwards trending channel right now the channels give you some good visual of, of where the, the stock or market is going. So if you're looking to get long, you could wait for it to come back down and bounce. And if you're a day trader, if it goes up again and hits the top edge, you can sell your position there. You use the channel to get in and out of trades if you're a shorter term trader. Let's see what other stocks we have on the list here. <clears throat> Intel. Let's look at some of the chip makers. So this is Intel, still down in the doldrums. The chip stocks have gotten hit all year long. Intel has not really been a player the last couple of years. We like AMD a lot better. We also have a put, a put sell, a naked put sell position on AMD. It's working out for us, getting ready to take that off for a profit. Uh, AMD been down in the doldrums as well, but has made this nice little final bottom here, I think. It's got some sideways actions, which is fine with us. <clears throat> and starting to move up let's look at micron <coughs> excuse me micron also chip stock not as strong as amd has had this pullback recently i don't i'm not no position on micron uh nvidia the other big player uh, moving up just like amd but still kind of in this long you can see we can even even draw the the line on the on the bottom here you can see it's been in this you know this big downtrend for a long time but you know in the long run chips run computers and computers are everywhere so you know these chip stocks are gonna gonna go up at some point you, you just have to have the stamina to, to hold out if you believe in the, in the companies none of these are recommendations i just want to say uh you know i'm not telling you to buy these stocks i'm just telling you what i see here but i know in the long run the stock market goes up and um you know pick your Pick your stocks that you like for the long run. Let's see, Nike, Nike, another quality company, long-term quality company, was in the doldrums, just above eighty dollars a share, but it's but it's rallied thirty bucks in the last two months. Has a nice move, but you can see where it stopped right on the two hundred day moving average here. So these moving averages pretty much act like magnets at time, either either going to knock it back down, or if it's if it's coming down, it'll bounce off of it. So right now it's had a nice move got above the, the, the 20 day here, got above the 50 day here. Now it has to contend with the 200 day moving average. If it can get through there, looks like, you know, Nike will want to keep going into the end of the year and maybe early next year, uh, you know, stalwart name brand company. Everybody knows Nike. How long are you going to keep it down? You can't keep it down for long. Value was down here near $80. Disney, same thing. Everybody knows Disney still kind of hanging around near the lows. Uh, under $100 a share, but 
how long are you going to keep Disney down? You got the parks, you got Disney Plus, you got all the merchandise that they sell. It, you know, Disney, everybody knows Disney. So you can't hold it down for long. Let's look at the monthly. Uh, the COVID low was around $80 a share. Look at this. Look at this reversal. I mean, if you want to get long Disney, you love the company for the long term, you know, keep an eye on it. Uh, you know, eventually it's going to turn around and go higher again. You know, that's the way I look at it. I know in the long run, I'm, I'm a holder for the long run. I know these stocks will turn around and go higher. You just have to, you just have to sit through some of this before you are rewarded. Um, let's see what else we have. Oracle. Yes, looking good. So you can see the pattern that I drew recently. You have the uptrend and the flat top. And typically, when it can blast through the resistance line here, it should keep going. You can see Oracle. Let me let me bring this down here so we can see what we're looking at. Oracle had the up move, flat top, held it down for a little bit, and now blasted through it. So you can see these. They're called ascending triangle patterns. If you go to a website called chartpatterns.com, chartpatterns.com will give you all of these patterns that show up time and time again on charts. You can also see down here on the RSI got to very oversold levels, and looky what happened. It bounced. Okay, so you use the RSI, you use the patterns. You can also kind of see the W pattern right here. Looks like a W. When the W pattern happens near lows, it's almost, it, I'm not going to say it's guaranteed, but it's almost guaranteed that the markets or the stock's going to go up. Once it got past this resistance line or the middle part of the W, look where it went. So keep an eye on these patterns. Go to chartpatterns.com. It'll help you figure out um, what to look for. Because the market is made up of humans. Humans trade this, so human nature doesn't change. So these patterns don't change over time. Same thing here. You have the nice little, this is Cisco. Let me move this over here. Cisco has a nice up pattern. Just been going, gotten above the 200 day moving average convincingly. So Cisco looks pretty good. We had a position on Cisco that we had a roll for a little bit, but it ended up working out for us. Let's look at some other stocks here. Procter and Gamble. Look at that nice move off the bottom here. Got into some oversold levels here on the RSI. Just powered higher. Walmart is a stock I like to talk about all the time. Just, you know, this is the biggest retailer on the planet. You know Walmart's going to go up over time, especially in, during inflation when prices are getting higher. Walmart's one of, the, one of the best places to shop to get better value for your money. Back here, look at this RSI. Even got below my low level of 20. And look how it this bounce right here went up, came back down for a second opportunity and look how Walmart's just rallied higher. You know, at the end of the year, these stores, Walmart, Target, um, they're going to have lots of sales. Uh, you know, the holiday season makes makes or breaks these companies. So we'll see in January uh, or maybe early February when when these guys start putting out their quarterly results. We'll see how they did. But, you know, I like Walmart for the long run. Um, Tesla. OK, let's talk about Tesla here for a minute. Um, Tesla got below the line in the sand here that I had on the charts. Kind of trading near the low still. I, I don't have an opinion on Tesla because Elon Musk is too much of a wild card for me. You know, he's trying to run Twitter now. Uh, if it's going down, he's going to have to sell more Tesla shares to keep the company afloat. I don't, you know, it's hard for me to, to, to put a, an opinion on Tesla stock where it's going to go. It's too messy of a chart right here. So, you know, I'm staying out. We don't have a position on Tesla, but it, it really depends what happens with Elon and Twitter and where that thing goes. And it'll decide how the company's doing. We have the healthcare stocks. We love to talk about healthcare stocks. Look at this nice chart. This is Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, bottom left, top right, all going up. When if you're wanna if you wanna be bullish on a on a stock and, and get a good stock, you wanna find a stock that has been making, you know, movement upwards over time. Even in the face of a downtrending market, let's look at Lilly here for a second. This is Eli Lilly. Here's the here's a symbol L L Y. You know the market's been going down all year, but look at Eli Lilly, been going up. Two years been going up. So you want to find these stronger stocks. The energy stocks as well. Look at those in a second. Here's Bristol Myers. These are all these are all um, healthcare pharmaceutical stocks. If you want to get them all in one shot, look at the XLV. Also, I guess I drew this last time. Ascending triangle with the flat top 
and just blast it through. So these patterns work. Watch for these patterns. Ascending triangle, blast it through. This is the XLV. Here's the symbol right here, XLV. This is the healthcare pharmaceutical um, ETF. Get all these stocks in one shop. Uh, let's look at the, like I said, the energies. So Exxon Mobil, oh, XOM right here. This is Chevron. So energy's been a, a, a great player for the last two years. Energy companies going up. Price of oil had been going up. Price of gasoline had been going up. So there are pockets of the market that are doing better. Um, we, I talk about Verizon. Uh, I, I, I like Verizon, of course, but still have not pulled the trigger on getting long on Verizon. Here's AT&T. Uh, actually looking, pretty, looking better than Verizon. Harris making some lows here on the RSI and finally bounce. Uh, Kellogg, these are, these are, you know, name brand companies that make products that we use day in and day out. Kellogg, General Mills, mostly cereal that we eat in the morning. General Mills, look at this, all time new highs in General Mills. So you gotta find the companies. Let's see what else we have. The, 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 the payment sector that I'd been bullish on, PayPal and Square, still not doing that great. This is PayPal. This is Square, just hanging around the lows, down in the dumps, Not no positions on those. Um, Costco, because so here's another company that I love, got hit hard this week with their earnings. So Costco got hit pretty good. So if you're looking for Costco, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great company. Let's look, at the, let's look at the monthly chart here for a second. Costco, uh, you know, look at this, look at this trajectory. So it's kind of making, this is the monthly chart. So let's draw a little, let's draw a little something here. You've got a congestion pattern where the price action gets tighter and tighter. Okay. And it's, it's, it's coming to a head and eventually it's going to blast out either higher or lower. You know, my bet is that Costco is going to blast out higher. Typically where it comes from, the direction where it comes from starts to get congestion and it'll continue finally in that same direction. So keep an eye on Costco. Let's go back to the daily chart. Oh, you can see right here I on the daily chart got the, uh, so this is the congestion pattern that I just drew. It works on the daily as it does on the monthly. So you can see it's getting tighter and tighter. So maybe there might be a little more time, maybe another month or two before it decides, you know, where it wants to go. So keep an eye on Costco. I, I like to see how this thing plays out over the next few months. McDonald's doing well. Pepsi, uh, great dividend company. Look at Pepsi just going up, up, up over time. Pepsi, very strong company. So you want to look for these strong stocks. If you're in for the long haul, you want to find these great dividend paying companies um another one stanley black and decker swk we just put a trade on stanley black and decker this week uh, another amazing dividend paying company coming down making the lows started and had this sideways action here so let me open this up a little has gotten above the 20 day and 50 day moving averages so that's the first sign you want to see them get above the moving averages you can see the rsi starting to move up as well Next stop, maybe the 200-day moving average here. Probably going to trade a little more sideways, needs some momentum, and starts to move higher. But that's that's a play that we've gotten into this week. Um, the home builder companies, Lowe's, also got into a position this week. Uh, I like the movement that it's making. I like the uptrend here. You can kind of see a W pattern here taking shape. It's not the exact W, but I like the I like the rounding bottom action here. And even if it goes sideways, it works for us. Home Depot, same kind of thing. You can kind of see a W pattern here. It's above all the moving averages. So these stocks, the home builder stocks, have some momentum behind it. Uh, here's Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. We talk about Warren Bush, Buffett almost every week. Also, look at the W pattern here. I said the 310 level is probably the level that, you, that it needs to get to. And it's been staying above that all week. So... You know, Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. Let's go back to our website here for a second. Uh, here's a uh, another options trading strategy that I wrote about to piggyback Warren Buffett. The secret to buying Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar. It's not a free report, but, you know, it's an interesting options trading strategy that I, that I wrote about that you can basically piggyback all his plays 
for a lot cheaper than what it costs him to do it. So if you're interested, take a look at that. That's Warren Buffett looking good here. Um, let's go through the last couple items on the list. Facebook, Meta, we looked at that. Did we look at that? It's down. It's still down in the lows. I don't like Facebook that much. IBM looking strong. Looked at Google. Last couple, Clorox looking good. So let's take a quick look at Clorox here. Let's draw the the ascending triangle, the up move, and then you had the the flat top right here around 150, okay? So we'll look at that, and it's just starting to move above 150 this week. So keep an eye on Clorox. This is Clorox CLX right here. Um, you know, if it stays above the flat top at 150, it's going to keep going. So keep an eye on Clorox. I may have to look at that for a play for us coming up. Um, Colgate, same thing. Um, also, a nice move up. Coca-Cola, always talk about Coca-Cola. Had the bottom here. RSI got oversold. Look at this nice bounce from 54 all the way up to 64. One of the greatest dividend players of all time. One of Warren Buffett's biggest holdings is Coca-Cola. So, you know, when you get a chance to buy Coke, when Coke falls down that hard, that fast, you really need to take take a, a look at possibly getting into the trade. You know, no no recommendations here for me, but these are the things that I look for. Um, two others, we have the utilities, Consolidated Edison and Southern Company. These are utility companies. We got into a play on Southern. Uh, it's working out for us, so hopefully we'll be able to take that play off for profits locked in. All right, I think that's it for here. I think that's, we've gone through the list. Let's look at the SPY one more time. And we'll call it a day. Uh, once again, 390 is my line in the sand. Got above that the last couple of days. Stayed above it, I should say. And is now trading above the 200-day moving average. The longer it can stay above the 200-day moving average, the stronger the case is made for support and the bulls going forward. So I'd like to see SPY uh, move up during next week. All right, that's all for me today. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope it helps you in your options trading. You know, you got to look at the charts. Charts is the first and foremost. You can't trade options without knowing what the stock's going to do or wh where the stock is, is moving. Um, you know, if this has been helpful, give me a thumbs up in this YouTube video. I try to make these every week if I can to help you out. Leave me a comment below in, in, in the comment section. Send me an email. Sign up for our free put song report and, you know, send me any questions you have. I love hearing from you. All right. That's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.